Good morning, everyone. This is a talk about experiences and lessons learned at, um, in, a, in a local project that uses Debian um, at schools in Germany, in Schleswig-Holstein, which is the northern, most northern country of Germany. Um, so before we start, I'd like just to go around how many teachers are in the room? Yay. How many developers, techies, system administrators? Well, developers first. Developers first. Okay. Technicians, the system administrators. Okay. Okay. So, so this, this story I'm telling you is maybe about all of you. How many? Oh, that's a good point. How many parents are in here? Uh, grandparents? Ah, good. Okay. Uh, actually, I forgot to raise my hand with the developers and the, tech, uh, the techies. So, hmm? I, I raised my hand then. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So, okay. Okay, so that's the official title of the talk. And so, I mentioned the sharing. I'm really interested in what you have to say, not say maybe, but write. So please, if possible, use the gobby. Um, so I'll be talking about a project in Germany. And the first question is actually, who am I talking about? Who are we? So that is our design. Um, we are a little group of people, actually, including me and a local computer company in Kiel, including my wife, actually and including all the schools that we are working with. Um, and um, the, the project setup is more like we're not selling a product to the schools, but we are actually offering our cooperation and our support. And um, so, and, and, and what, we, what, we try to, what we try to achieve is actually um, not this normal customer care, first level, second level support, but we actually try to achieve, um, on the one hand, introduce free software to the schools, on the other hand, be a partner, and also see them as a partner, so that there is a mutual learning process, process going on. Um, so, there's, there's the first story actually coming in. Like in 2011, we, I, I was doing support for one, for one um, Club of Rome school in, in Kiel, and I didn't know anything about what's going on in the Linux world, really. I was a Linux system administrator by the time, but I did not really connect to communities at that time. So they asked me for help. I said, yes, I'm a freelancer. I come in. I did it on my own. I invented a really complex setup. And, um, and then uh, Andreas, who is the guy from the computer company, he said, um, well, let's do something for other schools because we have all these school customers coming in and they are asking actually for how can we, how can we do IT better than we used to do it or than we are actually doing it now. And, and he said, and you've been doing this at the Club of Rome School in Kiel, so, so what's, what's your choice? What's your idea? And then... I sat down and I didn't know what to do otherwise. I wrote a big concept, actually, a big, big document about how to do IT at schools without having a clue about what I was writing about, actually. So then it came to a point where all IT teachers, so, so the teachers at a school that sort of feel responsible for the IT at the school, were gathered together by one of the deputy headmasters of a school we were actually were in communication already with. So we, I was sitting, I and Andreas and Angela too. So um, Andreas is a techie guy and Angela is more into communication. Um, we were sitting in front of this group of, of IT teachers and um, proposing our idea with a you know, presentation with like 50 slides and everything. So it was really overwhelming. And then there was this one teacher saying, why do you reinvent the wheel? Why do you reinvent the wheel? So there are loads of solutions already available and he just enumerated them. So, and then we dug down. We left the room, sort of. Uh, we tried to rescue the situation, but we left the room. And then Angela really took us aside. You did not look at what's going on on the planet. 
this is amazing. Why didn't you do that? So then we started looking at stuff. So we looked at stuff done by a company in Bremen that's called Univention. Is my voice still? Okay. Hello, better? Okay, thank you. So um, we looked at what the Univention people do. They have a UCS at school thingy. We looked at a different county, county in Germany, which is Baden-Württemberg. They, they had a solution for schools at that time. And we looked at Debian Edu, Scholar Linux. And that felt different because the others were doing, the county thing was just for the county. They didn't really um, plan to actually promote it somewhere else. The Univention product, you said it's cool, is really a product, and I tried to install it three times. At that time, that was 2011, it didn't work. So it f just the installation failed on a local computer. So I said, okay, this could not be it, maybe. And then I tried Scola Linux. Um, and what I found actually was a CD installer that provided me with a school server that was sort of working out of the box. So actually, only something that I was used from Windows small business service at the time. Um, so, and then, then Angela really came in and she said, okay, this looks, this feels like something you should do. We go there. So we went to a place in Germany called Gudersloh, which is my birth town, by the way. And there is one Scholar Linux group. And this Scholar Linux group handed me over to another group, which was in Zweibrücken in, in Rheinland-Pfalz, which is a different county. And then ha they had a project going on for the whole county, actually um, uh, uh, working on Scholar Linux as a model solution for the whole county, for all schools, with a lot of money involved, everything. And there, actually, I met Holger, Holger Levsen, who's in the room, and Jonas as well, and a couple of other DDs and people attached to Debian somehow. And it's really started to, to well, it started making few sense. Um, so, and at that time, um, in that project in Reinhardt Files, there was a big issue actually why the project, at the end, people would say it actually failed. And the point was that a lot of stuff got produced there, but it didn't get upstream to Debian. So they ended after three years with a different package server with different software on that. That was an overlay for Debian. But the back streaming, back upstreaming did not happen. So, so we came, I came back from this meeting. I said to Andreas and Angela, if we do it, we do it right. So we ne need to do it sustainably. We, well, one of us has to become a DD. Everyone was pointing at me at that time. And, and we work for the schools. And what we do has to end up in Debian so that we finally can actually stop working on schools, school projects, orphan stuff. And then it's still in Debian. And hopefully, someone else takes over. So, have a, a large context for our little, little project in Kiel. So, so far to the theory of doing free software at schools, but then we started deploying it, and then we started actually, you know, getting involved with people, with, with teachers, students, parents, not so much, sometimes. Uh, teachers, teachers, a lot of teachers, actually. And and without turning this into a ranting session, we, 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 we were actually confronted with the demand, this is working at home, why is it not working at school? So um, we really needed to actually change our way of being when getting in touch with the people. And the most important part was not IT. It was communication and it was listening. So, and considering ourselves as being partners, not as much as imposers, missionaries, free software advocates, um, and more like going, going in touch with them and actually really trying to get, trying to understand what they are, what they need, what are the needs, and what can we provide, and also be honest with that, what can we not provide? So, um, yeah, I, I just go back because otherwise this happens. So the intersection becomes really, really small if there is any at all. Okay, so 
Um, I, I, would, I would also like to mention that all this, what we, what we did, all the experiences we made, would not have been possible with such a great community in the background as Debian, and also with the work of a few people in the Debian Edu project, um, namely Holger, Wolfgang Schwer, also Peter Reinaldson in, well, more, more the legacy stuff, um, uh, because he's not that active anymore at the moment, but responsive on questions, really good. Um, so we wouldn't, be, we wouldn't be there. And what we also um, tried to be, how we tried to be actually, was um, we did not want to sell a product. So there's, there's a, actually a competitive product in Schleswig-Holstein and in the counties um, in the south of us. It's called iSurf. And they really, they, they shoot it in every school. Bob, 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 bob. And it's like mushrooms popping up from the, from the soil. Um, and it's a, it's a very rigid way of providing the system. So, so if you have a question, if you're at the school and you have a demand that's not complying with the, with the default setup, then there's virtually no chance, as far as I heard, to actually adapt the setup. And that was something, as partners, we understand ourselves as, as being able to actually modify what we provide. And that is actually very, very easily, can be done very easily with Debian Edu, with Scholar Linux. Um, so just as a reminder what Scholar Linux is, it's a main server, it's clients attached running Debian, it's diskless clients attached running Debian, it's terminal servers that you can attach, and then you can run thin client stations. We, we actually extend the setup by wireless in the school building, um, e-learning software, et cetera, et cetera. And every step that we, every, every piece that we sort of develop, um, I'll try to actually upstream it to Debian. So let's come to the lessons learned. Um, it's not about IT, really, not at all. Um, if, if the social setup is working well for you, then anything is possible. It might just take a bit of time, it might just take a bit of money, but the main thing is communication. So, and the main thing also is, if communication goes wrong, if something goes wrong, if the space becomes unclear, clouded between people, between you and your customer slash partner, then it's, it's really important to clear up the space immediately, as soon as possible. So get in touch and stay in the flow of communication. Um, to be able to communicate, actually, as a floss enthusiast, uh, it's probably not that easy. Well, for me, sometimes it's not that easy, actually. But the best thing you can do is listen. So really train your ears, train your heart, and get the people in. Try to really understand what they've run from you. And once you have that, you can come with the ideas. Slowly, maybe, but, and maybe not in the technical detail, because that's always overwhelming. I have never seen a situation where it is not. Um, and then do the technical solution, and then see if actually what they wanted is what they got. And check that early, maybe during the deployment. Um, what is also, um, uh, in, in the context of that, is actually uh, don't impose, don't demand, but know your boundaries. So if you go to school and then you start the whole thing with a free software project and you want free software because free software is what we need in education. It's not Chromebooks dumped into schools like for a couple of pens. It's, um, we, want, we want students to actually be able to choose the devices, the operating systems, the software that they need, the, the way of communication they want. So we want to maybe provide the means for declouding people, which is actually a nice word, to decloud people. So, so know your boundaries, but, but don't impose. And don't, don't be a missionary. Don't be a missionary either. It doesn't make sense. It's, I've done that a lot. I, I, you, know, you have to use free software and then they try it and no, it's broken. And then it's actually, the, the whole thing gets worse because they tried it and then it's broken. So, so that's why we don't actually do acquisition with all the schools around us and you know, tell them about our project. They find us. We don't have many customers, but the customers we have are awesome. 
and the cooperation is awesome, and it really is fun. So, um, another thing is that we have one guy on our team, uh, his name is Marcel, and he is, well, he's, a, he's a, an administrator, no way of saying it differently, but he, is, he feels like a non-techy person. So that is really, really nice, actually, when uh, actually, we have, we have had masters at the schools that say, oh, can you bring Marcel, can you bring Herr Sandu, that's his name, um, because he is such a convenient, nice way of being, and, you know, he's, he's a really quiet guy, and, and when he says something, he really brings it to the point, and people understand him. So if you have, if you, well, you shouldn't do that on your own anyway, so you need a team, and if you have a team, a person like that, it's really, it's so valid, so good. So, um, and, and mostly those persons, those, those staff people, don't go in depth when it comes to fixing bugs or problems or packaging software. That's not what they do, but they, 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 they create the link between you and your partner slash customer. So also think long term, not short term. So sometimes we, we hear a demand and maybe people get angry at us, but it vanishes after two weeks. So, and it doesn't come back. So, on the other hand, think about, we have release cycles in Debian, so we need to actually enroll our customers in having and going with these release cycles. We don't want to deploy an image and then they are stuck with that image. So we want to actually create a flow regarding software upgrades um, regarding corporations, regarding staff, people, so, so really think long term and also act short term. Uh, something we haven't achieved yet really but we need to do is involve your team in Debian. So that at the moment I am the main person that actually interacts with Debian, so that is not ideal. So, so we need to improve on that. And uh, one important thing that we have experienced now, or I experienced a second time, watch out for staff changes in the schools. So if you, um, if there is a headmaster change or a deputy headmaster change or the, the IT affine people in the school, if they change, probably the whole situation changes and maybe also uh, it changes that you're not a customer anymore. So, so be aware of that and, and sense what's going on uh, and be prepared that you actually lose a customer when that such a change happens. Because those, those people in charge, actually, they already have been at other schools. They have been doing IT. They had their solution there, maybe. In Germany, it's quite common that you change the school when you, when you become promoted. So, um, yeah, so, and that's fine. They have their experience and they want that, of course, for their school. And, um, and, and with, with the teachers I have met, only with some of them, um, they, they actually really react and say, no, 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 we want to keep the setup or we want free software. It's more like, well, yeah, let's try something else if it makes sense and I, I'll bring my Android to my lessons anyway. So, um, um, so, so, yeah, really be careful with that. So, we have one more minute. So, um, any comments, any remarks, any questions? Mike, please. Hi. I'd like to ask, after the initial setup, how many times per year, for example, a school needs you and calls you to handle some stuff that they cannot handle themselves? Um, so, that, that differs, actually. We have one school that, that let us come in every week for two hours. We have another school that we only play the fire engine, fire, uh, what is it, fire people for. So when something fails really, and that is like, depending on the reason, sometimes it's the DSL provider, some, sometimes it's actually that we have a disk failure. So we try to monitor that, of course. And, um, but also you normally notice that immediately on the network, so they call us in. Um, we have one school that is so uh, in, well, it's, uh, actually creating progress in our project that uh, schedules 
bigger project with us four times, five times a year. Like, um, we work on a school manager plugin for, for Goza, which is the LDAP management front end. So they, they actually did the incentive for that. Then uh, I package Elias for, for, for Debian, which is an e-learning software. So and they, you know, they, drive, they drive the project forward. So it's really, really different. Um, and my recommendation is actually, if the school can afford it, and, and Kiel, there is a model change. So, um, you know, like five years ago, it was, uh, they had something going wrong with the sink or the toilet, and then they called a plumber. Yes, sure. But with the IT? Huh? No way. And, and there is, there's a paradigm shift at the moment that they say, okay, the toilet and the sink and the sockets and the wall, electricity and the computer, it's, it's all equipment. So, so we actually need to get some money for that. And, so, so, and if possible, send someone to the school on a regular basis and stay in touch. And also as the project lead and the school head, um, yeah, have a chat at least once a year. Maybe better twice a year. Hi, welcome. Hey. It's on. Yeah. Welcome to Montreal. Thanks so much for uh, being here with us. I'm very excited uh, in th about learning more about Skull Linux. Um, uh, a quick question for you. Do you handle requests with a support tracker? Yes, and we have OTRS. If so, do your customers handle that directly or they just call you, email? How do you handle this? Yeah, that's, that's a good question, actually, because we wanted our customers to have as transparent access to our processes as possible. So what we have is we have OTRS tracking system and two, one or two persons from each school have an account as an agent, which is a supporter on the tracking system so that they actually can see everything that we see. So that, I mean, that's sometimes a bit revealing and you cannot, you know, you cannot rant about your customers and that, which is not belonging there anyway. Um, so, and, and we also need to train our staff members to actually not be afraid to put a comment in a ticket and say, th that says, I didn't know how to do that. Because I pick it up and then I try to sort of help, help our staff people. Um, because then you have to reveal your failures, your incompetence. Um, and, and actually that is one of our big principles we have in this project to not hide our stuff. And it's, uh, it's derived from Debian. In Debian, we don't hide our mistakes either. So, and we have the tracking system. And the customer, lets, we let them know, let them know anything. Okay. Another question? You stop me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. One more question and then. Well, just uh just a quick uh, experience sharing. Um, as a parent of four here in Quebec province, uh, in Montreal, I have two in elementary school and two in uh, secondary school, high school. And basically in Quebec province, um, there is, um, the, the uh, schools are managed by a, a system of school boards that um, manage territories. And it's a system that looks very much like the municipal system with elected officials and so on. And I participated in school elections for a school board um, official uh, two years ago. I also was a volunteer for half a day or week during our whole year in uh, elementary school and it made me witness to all the problems that we have. At least here in Quebec, we have a lot of people paid directly so that free software never happens or never gets close to the schools. And we have, a, it's a worse situation than only having non-free software is that now we have three companies, Microsoft, Google, and Apple, competing for space in the classrooms with iPads, Chromebooks, mm. and Microsoft 365. How do you address that? Is that even a problem for you, or do you see it's a different situation in Europe than, than what we have here? Um, and in German schools, the teachers have the right to choose their media equipment for learning. So if the, school pe uh, the teachers and the parents in the school conference, if they say, we want to use free software, then that's the decision. So it cannot be superimposed by government or county government. Or so the decision is at the school level? It's at the school level, exactly. Okay. We, um, in September in this year, we have a meeting with uh, an institute 
part of the county government in Schleswig-Holstein, which is uh, basically taking responsibility for, for uh, uh, quality assurance regarding media and IT usage at school. And um, because they got in touch with us by different story, um, and they, 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 in, in this talk, they said, well, we have, we have IT providers working for us. Um, and then um, it's like, I, I don't want to name names, but it's like they, they can sell you education-priced hardware, and then they, they see there's a demand to actually set up the hardware in the school, so they say, yeah, we can do that too, so they send someone, and then they hand over the setup back to this institute, and then they realize that they have to actually fix loads of things. So they are actually looking for someone that is really involved in schools and IT, and then they got in touch with us, and they were a bit like, it feels like you have made up your mind about IT and schools. That's actually quite amazing. We need to talk. So, and I'm quite curious what, the, what will come out of that. W one thing is that the, the paradigm goes, moves on from school server, one per school, user management per school, and it goes over to ID management on a municipality level or county level. Okay, so I'm here at DebConf. Address me if you have questions or more feedback. Thanks for attending the talk. <laughs>